and it, it is we have to get to the point where we have a constitutional system, a democratic system which people can understand. But it can be different. It should be different in different places. It should have some of that organic elements to it. But there has to be some central bits which you as a citizen can grasp on to use against the state. Now, I'm an old liberal. Okay? I, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, I was an anarchist for a week. I gave it up. I became a liberal. For me, this government, it can do wonderful things. It can also do many things badly and terrible. And how you control government or, in this matter, to be honest, how you control Tesco's is actually very important. And we have to give people the levers to do it. Now, actually, it ties into Rosemary's question about consumerism. Because most of my friends control their life by buying things. By buying organic this, or by buying that, or by doing that, or doing things. And actually, it was as if we thought we had a new way of political action, which was, by controlling the things we bought, we controlled the life around us. And to be honest, if you can afford to shop at the new Waitrose up the road, and you can do that things, then you may be able to get the semblance of control. What the crash has done is shown that actually consumerism isn't control, it's consumption. Now, I agree with Anthony, but actually there is the liberty issue. I think maybe at the nub of it is actually, I think people now want to feel that they have some control over something. And they're grasping around for what they can actually hold on to. You know, it is a scary world. And you have to feel that you have some control. If you can't have control through buying things, maybe they'll come back to the idea of politics. <laughs> now, you know, I don't, I can't answer Rosemary's question about organisation any more than Anthony can. I don't think anybody could. If we could, we'd be maybe the saviours. Uh, uh, what I do know is we have two, we, ha we have a collective system which is called political parties. And I'm someone who works in parties and, know, you know, like people in parties, I, you know, I understand them. I also recognise that they're dying. We haven't found a replacement for them. My worry is that the way in which we're doing it at the moment actually hides power, because all these new ways of doing it miss the central bit that actually power is in somebody else's hands. And we have to find a new political system which connects those people to the power, to power. Because the danger is, what will happen is, parties get hollowed out, something which has been going on for the last 50 years, <laughs> uh, Westminster gets hollowed out, but actually, I mean, you get new forms of activity, but actually power stays centralised. And that's what's really dangerous. I mean, it was once described to me as what it's like is you have an institution called political parties which are dying, but have their hand round the throat of British democracy. And as they die, their hand constricts. Mm. And the problem is, can we keep them alive long enough, that 19th century system of politics, alive long enough so their hand doesn't clench down, and we can actually take the hand off and find a new way forward? And I don't know if we can, because every time I look at it, that hand is actually getting tighter. But unless, the only way forward I can see is a combination of having a lot more diffuse power in our country. I would love to get into a effect where we can actually talk about economic power as well, in terms of how we can actually give people control over where they work as well. And also, at the same time, find ways in which people can actually come together, as Antti said, but actually affect decisions. So it's looking at some of the ideas in terms of direct democracy and all those sort of things, and whether that offers an alternative, a new pluralist political system, which is a mixture of representative democracy, direct democracy, etc. Now, I don't know if that works, but I think that's the best bet we have of finding a new way, rather than simply gradually being choked to death by these dying institutions. Is this hand gripping the throat, is this global confidence? I think it's, 
I wish it was that simple. I really do, because you could do something about it. I actually think the hand, in some ways, is we have the institutions here which are, on the whole, 19th century. We have a modern world which doesn't fit reflect it in it. And people are trying to control it. And for me, that, that, those hands are... Our parliament, that hand is our parliament, it is our political parties, it is our political class, it is the media, it is the... And, and as it it tries to control more, and it's dying, it, it's throttling it. I'm not an anti global I'm not, I'm not against globalisation. In some ways, I, you know, when I started mm. in politics, one of the things which really infused me was the European idea. Which means that the fact that occasionally I now spend a lot of time with Eurosceptics occasionally freaks me out. So I've got Nigel Farage, the leader of UKIP, supporting one of the projects we're doing. If you know me personally, that's a really strange thing to find myself in. I even like the man, which is even more scary. Um, <laughs> 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 I 